Hi there, it's Alexandra here from the Middle Size Garden YouTube channel and blog and it's the October Garden Tour. And it's a time of year when the garden looks absolutely fine if you're looking at it from the house through a window and you haven't got your glasses on. And people do say, oh, the garden's looking lovely. But in reality, it's the October mess. And if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, I imagine it's what you'll recognise as the March mess. We've had another very dry, very hot summer and quite a few plants have struggled. And also other plants which have done well have rather taken over. These days most of us don't clear our gardens away for the winter because seed heads and grasses often look fabulous in the frost and also the wildlife really appreciate a little untidiness. But this garden has gone beyond a little untidiness. Now to start by being really positive, I'd like to show you the highlights of the garden, what really has worked and what gives me great joy for about a minute. And then after that, I'm going to be really honest about what the problems are and what we can do about them in the hope that it could help you. I think a lot of the problems have really been about not having enough time for gardening. In the early part of the year we had a focus because the gardens open for Faversham Open Gardens and Garden Market Day which is on the last Sunday of every June and so that really gives us a target but of course once it's over then it's very easy for other things to get ahead of the gardening to-do list. And I think the biggest problem has possibly been the watering. Because it's been a very dry summer I really needed to have been watering plants which are pots, vegetables and any newly established plants maybe three or four times a week. And the garden is just a little bit longer than the length of the hose. And that means that for the back beds and for the veg beds I have to take the hose out onto the lawn and then use watering cans and then of course I have to roll the hose up and it really all takes such a long time that very often all I do is water the pots. I don't believe that watering plants that are well established is worthwhile. They either have to survive or not because it's not a very good use of water. But in the first year, pretty much all plants need extra watering in order to get established. But in my back beds, because it's so difficult to water there, plants haven't got established and therefore weeds have taken over. And that I think is probably why both those beds are really not working. So we've decided that what we need to do is to add an extra tap into the garden, probably around the veg beds, so that we can water the veg beds and the back beds easily. But this is going to be quite a lot of fuss and quite expensive. And we're kicking ourselves for not doing it when we either had major work done in the kitchen or major plumbing work done in the house or even when we landscaped the garden. So if you are doing any major landscaping work or any major plumbing work, do have a look at whether you actually need another tap in your garden at the same time. The big successes are really the dahlias, but they are perennials and perennials, if they stay in the ground, spread. And that means that they go a bit sort of dead and bald in the middle. And then you've got the big active ones around the outside and it all looks a bit scrappy. Because I don't dig up my dahlias, I just protect them with mulch over the winter. This has happened, so I will need to dig some of them up this winter and just reorganise them and get rid of the dead patch in the middle. I am loving the berries. We've got rose hips, we've got cotoneaster, we've got pyracantha and we've got holly. And speaking of holly, we have a large holly golden king plus two home oak trees which we topiarise. We try and do as much of the gardening ourselves as we can, but if a job is too big for us or too expert for us or needs special equipment, then we have to pay people to do it. And topiarising the trees is one of those expert jobs. 
So if you're thinking of having large topiarised trees in the garden, you might like to know how often you'd need to topiarise them. And because home oaks and holly are both medium or medium slow growers, we've only had to topiarise them once a year. This was last topiarised this time last year and we'll need to get the topi redone as soon as we can. In the September garden tour, we experimented with trimming the lavender with a strimmer because it's so much quicker, but we cut back really hard in order to keep the shape of the lavender. So I was a little bit worried that this might not work. However, as you can see, we've already got new buds coming up in the lavender, so I think we're fine. Our most beautiful tree and possibly the most striking thing in the garden is a smoke bush or Cotinus cagaria grace. And this has fabulous colour from midsummer to late autumn. But this particular tree does suffer from something called verticillium wilt. The general advice with verticillium wilt is to chop the tree down, to burn all the leaves, to get rid of everything. But in fact, you can't actually get things like verticillium wilt out of a garden. So we've decided to just go with living with it. We're going to cut out the big branch from this tree that has clearly died and allow the new healthy growth, which is already coming up, to take over. We've done this once before and it was successful, so we'll give it a go again and hopefully we'll have this tree for many more years. And speaking of pests and diseases, this is Senecio angel wings, the lovely grey Senecio with lovely felted leaves, which actually seem to have been nibbled. I'm assuming this is slug damage, but I'll find out more. So that's quite a gardening to-do list coming up and we'll let you know how everything went in the November garden tour. So if you've enjoyed this, please do hit like because then I'd know you'd like more garden tours. And if you'd like more tips, ideas and inspiration for your garden, subscribe to the Middle Sized Garden YouTube channel. And thank you for watching.